As you know, we have traveled around the world. We've had some great adventures. We've had some mishaps along the way. And I always like to learn from those things and share those things with you. So I've compiled a number of things that we have used and continue to use travel tips, hacks, and things to make your trip a lot easier. Let's talk about power. When you're traveling on a cruise ship, you have limited plugs and access to them. So we like to take advantage of all the plugs that we can, those being the American plugs and the European plugs. So we have a converter that will use the European plug giving us access to another two plugs with the converter, which are American plugs, and then you get four USB ports. We have a plug extension cord that is a 360 plug. So literally it can turn in all directions, which you will never be surprised how many times this will be needed. I've even used them on airplanes when I can't get the plug to fit in the right position. Now you can see I've got this here and I've got the plug which is completely jammed back there and you never would have thought it fit this box, certainly for my Canon 5D Mark IV um, charger would not have fit back there. And then I can just kind of um, sit it here and I can just let it charge for the flight. And on the end, you plug anything in. You can also take a T-plug, plug that in, and now you've added more outlets, which we usually hook up our Canon battery packs to, and they fit perfectly on the ends. So multitude of ways to extend your plug situation here in your cabin. Doug loves how I repurpose these business class amenity kit cases. I use them for everything. This is where I keep all of the additional plugs and extension cords that we have. They go into all these little bags. They're great. Let's talk about out and about when you have gone off the cruise ship, you're taking excursions with the cruise ship or just doing it on your own. There's a multitude of things that you could be using. Continuing with power once you're off the cruise ship. We all know that our phones last only a certain amount of time as do our electronics. So we have found this charger, which is solar powered. It has a tremendous amount of power. I bought the one that has the most power that you can have. I do suggest though you fully charge it before you leave and then the solar power will keep it going for the rest of the day. But this device is awesome. It's also waterproof. You can also hang it off of your backpack or anything else that you're traveling with and it charges as you go. So it's awesome. Love these. Should you be caught in rain anywhere, which we have been in a multitude of places, these little packs of ponchos, they're clear, they're easy to throw on and they are compact for packing. We always throw those in our bags, they go in our camera bags, and in a you know flash or something, if we need to even cover a camera bag, we can use those because I'll get wet before my camera gets wet. You can also get them in a larger version, so if kids maybe um, want some colorful ones, you know, people want different types of things. So there's different ways that you can um, have these ponchos that are easily packable. Anyways, get some of those. This is one of the key hacks that you have been waiting for bug repellent. And I'm not just talking any bug repellent. I'm talking bug repellent that works in the Amazon. It works in the Galapagos Island. It works in China. It works in Miami. Anywhere you go, this will work. It is Natropel. It comes in the form of wipes and it also comes in the form of spray. We use both. We tend to keep these in our camera bags because sometimes we forget them. These are eight hours of, of coverage. And now when we went to the Amazon, as you may know, there are bugs that will bite you in places that you never, you never knew they could bite you. And there are bugs that you've never seen before. And we were told you need to bring the most powerful bug repellent you can. So I bought the nuclear DEET. We never used it. We only used these. These were a lifesaver. They're easy to put on at any time and reapply, but I, I can't talk highly enough about these. These are awesome. 
mini waterproof cases. Specifically, this one is a Pelican. Um, we actually use Pelican cases for our cameras. They're large Pelican cases, but they also make them in small versions. They are watertight, waterproof, perfect for anything. This, this one specifically won't hold a phone, but you can put your, say your CPAS in it. You can put your money in it, your credit cards. Um, if you are wanting to swim with your camera, like your phone camera, then you can actually buy these little waterproof bags that you can put them in. Personally, I don't totally trust them, so I don't use them um, because we have GoPros and things like that. But uh, my advice is just get one of these if you want to you know, keep your valuables with you. It might not all be snorkelers or water adventurers, but um, it is definitely something that I do a lot, Doug does with me. I would say he doesn't love it as much as I love it, but I carry my snorkel gear with me everywhere I go. So something to consider, just put on your list if you want to have something that is of quality because when you um, book excursions, going on the boats and stuff, well, they do have them. They're not the best quality and honestly, I, I don't want to use somebody else's piece that's been in their mouth. So even if you bring, you know, your own snorkel, do that. I always bring mask snorkel flippers are coming with us. When you're out and about, say, at a beach on shore or you're at the pool, the little tie downs for your towels. But these ones I find very compact. Um, some of the other ones I see people have these big clips, but uh, this one is the beach chair buddy. So it literally hooks around the chair. You unclip it, clip it around the towel and the chair. And it's nice because it's flat. It doesn't uh, jam up against you or you don't hit the little plastic things that clip on. If you want that for um, windy days, they're great. Next is a beach bag. Whoa, that... whoa, whoa, you forgot what goes in the beach bag. Super hack. Oh, <laughs> yes, this is not only a great bag that blows up, but it's what comes in it. <laughs> That you can keep your champagne in. These bags are awesome. They come flat. You get them in a package of 15. They have a little pump that comes with them. They blow up. So you can pack this when you're coming to your cruise ship. You can bring your champagne or your wine, whatever you enjoy. Put it in one of these because getting on the cruise ship, I actually did bang my bag and it fell and it turned out fine. So now let's enjoy some. Cheers. Cheers. For your wines, for your champagnes, anything you're bringing on board or taking anywhere, quite honestly, they're great. Beach bag. So I like to bring a bag on board just for carrying around the ship. You tend to take your things down to the pool and things like that, throw in your books or anything like that. They have towels down there. Sometimes I just have extra things with me. They're great to have. This one is nice and soft, again, compact for packing. Then we have the waterproof backpack, which is my friend. I love my waterproof backpack. This is a new one. Um, it's easy to use. It is, I believe, a 30 gallon. It's pretty big and I use it everywhere. But we'll check that out at the beach. It has absolutely been a lifesaver. Well, it might be a perfect day today. The weather is clear, it's bright, it's sunny, and there's no chance of rain in the future today. Um, this backpack, it has multiple purposes. It's great for going out on day trips, overnight trips, whatever you're doing out on boats. We carry a lot of camera gear and things like that. So when you roll it up, it actually becomes watertight. And if you let the air, um, if you don't squeeze the air out, it kind of creates a buoyancy to it as well. And also there has been many times that we have been caught in downpour in rain, like when we were at Monte Picchu, and this was a lifesaver. So carry gear or things you absolutely don't want to get wet. These are great and it's lightweight, it's perfect. A number of years ago, I found these bags on Amazon, which I put our snorkel gear in. They are a lifesaver because I used to have other bags that were always hard to put over your shoulder and carry. 
These ones have a handle if you want to carry them like this or you want to put them over your shoulder. They actually hook to our backpacks as well. So they are awesome for keeping all that snorkel gear in. Taking care of your family, yourself, on your cruise, inside your cruise, on land, everything that you might need. First thing is Tide to Go and some little detergent. So you wanna wash your bathing suit, something like that. You may use the laundry service on board, you may not. Sometimes you get a little stain, you spill some red wine, things happen. Purell is great to have with you in your bag, around the ship, and when you go off, you could be in a different country, they don't have soap. Carry this with you, should you not have that available. This is great when those things are. We have Travel Hack from Nikki. You've probably seen me using these on the airplanes. You've seen me use them in hotel rooms. I literally wipe down everything. Clorox wipes that I have all the time. I also have wet wipes for your hands because you're not gonna wipe your hands off with Clorox wipes. I have wiped down it all. The phone, the remote control, all of the handles. I want it germ-free. <laughs> so these are great. So that leads me into having Ziploc bags. I carry a multitude of sizes for Ziploc bags. Again, you can't imagine the things that they come in handy for. I do not keep these in your bag by themselves in with clothes or shoes because once they've been opened, they do tend to leak. So keep those in a Ziploc bag. Sometimes they get holes, so when you have extras, they're ready for everything. Citrus magic for your bathroom. When you're sharing a cabin that is of a small size, sometimes you need your bathroom to smell nice after someone has been in there. So I'm not sure what kind of magic it is, but I've been using this for 20 years. Prior to it being in Bed Bath & Beyond, this is great to have. And while this shirt might not be the most perfectly pressed shirt after traveling in my suitcase, even though I do keep it in plastic because I keep everything on hangers. Um, I also bring wrinkle release spray. <laughs> so that's great to have um, for dresses or anything that uh, gets a little crinkly. They don't allow you to bring steamers or irons um, on the cruise, so that's great. Should you be in a cabin as well with a multitude of people who have different sleeping habits, perhaps some snores, um, earplugs, great to have. Super hack by Nikki and used by Doug. <laughs> Dry shampoo, and it's nice and small for travel. So sometimes when you get up in early in the morning, you wanna go and have breakfast in the uh, restaurant, you don't feel like having a shower right away, but your hair's not looking great, spray this, it's perfect. Um, it's also great for kids. Sometimes they don't always wanna get in the shower or the bath. Spray this on if you don't want their hair looking all crazy, it's great. Cruise ships used to have these um, mini bottles that they would give you of shampoo and conditioner. Most of them no longer do. It's just a, like a two-in-one. Should you be traveling by plane to get to your cruise ship, you obviously have to think about weight of your luggage. So you can always bring these if you've been to hotels. Um, you can you know, use those or you can buy smaller versions at stores that are great for travel. For people like myself, who I, we did not come from a plane that I had to worry about weight, I just bring my regular size bottles with me and, uh, and then you have that, your own things to use on the cruise. So don't forget, they don't always have the best shampoos or conditioners or things available to you, so bring your own. Water bottles, something that everybody has, but don't always think to bring on cruises. Um, the other part of them is these ones are insulated. These ones are hot and cold. When we were in the Amazon, I filled this up with water every day when we'd go on our treks and it would stay cold for hours and hours and hours. These were 
amazing. And on the cruise ships, um, you know, they don't, they have the water taps available that you can get cups of water anytime you want and they have certain juices available. If you're going on to land, um, you, you know, they sell water bottles to you. I think they're like $5 or something. If you don't want to spend that, fill up your water bottles at the water stations and take them online with you. So before we go any further, if you haven't already, please subscribe. And don't forget to hit that bell so you get all of the regular updates when our new videos come out. On cruise ships nowadays, they have major medical facilities that can take care of almost anything. However, for the cuts and scrapes and things of that nature, hives, poison ivy, things like that, we like to be self-sufficient and take care of those things. They do also have a shop that has some items. It's kind of hit and miss whether you're gonna find something you want or not. We wanted some Q-tips the other day and they didn't have them. So we like to bring all of those things with us. Some of the things that we do bring, first aid kit. I tend to get myself sometimes into situations that get me hurt or injured or cut myself or stung by things just because I like to adventure, so we tend to carry a little bit more. I also am allergic to band-aids and latex, so I have things that um, can take care of that if I need to. Um, so make sure if you as well have those um, allergies to those things, bring your own band-aids and things like that. As well, just as a couple of things, we won't go through the whole medical kit right now. I do have a first aid kit video that you can check out this link and uh, you know see some more uh, breakdown of all of those things. But just a couple of things. Neosporin is great for cuts. Kids are always doing things to themselves, so that's great to have. Um, Benadryl is if you have allergic reactions, um, hives, poison ivy. Imodium. When you're traveling, especially if you're on a cruise that is going to some maybe more exotic locations, you're having food on land, um, you, you tend to get sometimes upset stomach and you know tend to have issues when you're changing your diet. So Imodium is great to have with you. And being that you're on a boat, Dramamine is always important to have that that is one thing most of the time you will find on board, but you're gonna pay double the price. So just bring a little box with you. We also um, tend to do a lot of adventure traveling. So we, you know, go to the travel clinic, we get our updated shots and things like that. And they will usually give us a prescription of amoxicillin for Doug, because I'm allergic to it, and a Cipro, so that uh, if you have advanced or severe traveler's diarrhea, then um, you want to have those on hand. And that's pretty much um, some of the smaller, like limited items, you know, not going through the whole kit that you want to have with you. Baby powder. Uh, many people know this, many people don't. When you're at the beach, if you sprinkle baby powder on you, it literally makes the sand disappear and fall off of you. And we have had times where the kids have said, I hate the sand on me, I did get it off me. And a lot of people don't like sand on them. So put this in your bag, sprinkle it on, you know, a, a good amount, and the sand will come off really easy and you can put your shoes back on without all that sand on your feet. For anybody who loves to buy things on shore and bring them back and you don't have enough room in your bag, I mean, it might be one of those people who have known to do that before, these little compact little bags um, are great to throw in a bag and then you can pull it out and you have a larger bag to bring more things back to the ship with you. <laughs> Cash, cash is always important to have with you. Well, you are gonna need it on the cruise ship, though in the casino, depending on I think what level you are, sometimes they will put it on your sea pass, sometimes they will say you actually have to use cash. Separately from the casino, you wanna have dollars to tip your porters, dollars to tip people, things like that. A few dollars if you're, you know, say we were just in Nassau, you wanna go out for lunch, you don't have your credit card or they don't accept a credit card. Many countries that we've been in accept certain credit cards. Some places don't accept any credit cards. They will take most of the time US dollars. Um, so always good to have. 
And if you're traveling to a country that specifically wants their own currency, try to get some when you arrive or before you leave. Prior to departure, I always like to have locks. Locks for our bags, whether we are going on the cruise, going on a plane first to catch the cruise, lock your bags. But make sure that they are TSA approved. These ones can be opened by the TSA agents without them having to cut them off. So you still have your, your um, locks once they have been checked and they put them usually back into your bag. Um, great to have. Oh, a roller. You can't not have a roller. There's always something that maybe is stuck to, you know, your clothes. I wasn't even around my dog. And s certainly there's always something you can use this for. So throw that in your bag. Cards. Can you not use cards? Everybody can use cards. Oh, we have been many places. This is actually something that Doug would have liked to have had when we were in Puerto Rico. Because it was really hot when we visited Puerto Rico. And um, there was nothing really to keep us cool. This is a handheld fan. Um, and it has a lot of power. This one is great. I did a lot of research and this uh, Opolar is a great fan. Like I said, it uh, creates a lot of a lot of uh, fan, <laughs> a lot of wind, and it's actually very cool. It comes with an extra battery. We had, I believe we had these two handheld ones in the Amazon, and then we had one that was a little bit bigger. Rechargeable desk fan that we brought. I put it back in the box to return home. It might add a little bit of weight, but it is just to keep it from breaking. And uh, you can actually, we had it hanging from our bed, to keep us cool because uh, we had no air conditioning, obviously, in the but Amazon. How did it last all night? And then rigged it to hang it from the bed. I don't think anybody in the Amazon is, was as cool as us. So I'm actually going to show you that video because it was awesome. <laughs> Here we are from the Amazon. It is the morning, and we wanted to share with you our little trick on how to stay cool while sleeping in the Amazon. It is probably 80% humidity and we have blankets on because it creates so much cool. It is crazy. And it's called a desk fan, but I bought it because it had this little stand and I knew that Doug could figure out how to hang it from here for us. So this is the old polar fan up close and personal. It's only on setting two and it goes up to three, which creates a lot more wind. And it's a cool wind, obviously with the name Polar, that's why. So here's a close-up of the system. Take the fan and you hang it on the top rail. And then you take the, the ribbon that my smart wife puts on our luggage so that we can see it at, at the airport. And you tie the fan to, the, to that. This is the strap from my, from my camera which is also wrapped around the fan, which hooks onto the battery, which just hangs there so we have battery power all night. Because although the fan has a battery, it's not enough to run all night, um, but that backup battery will run it, charge it forever, basically. So during the day, we recharge the fan, and he basically like ran up the battery. I mean, I think you'll see it's like the little blue light. It's one tick down, one tick down all yeah. night of sleeping. It's basically still fully charged backup battery. We have two more super hacks coming your way that are really great. But in the meantime, for all of you who have significant others that love to handle things, these are some of the things that we like to carry. Or at least Doug says, please pack them. And then he takes care of things. So. We have this thing, which is a thingamajig to me, but I know where he's used it. We have tied down things to the back of quads, to motorbikes. It has these little hooks on them so they can attach to the under places and basically tie it down. This is like for a motorcycle, for his motorcycle, but we've used it in many places. We have Gorilla Tape. You can use duct tape, honestly. 
I do like both too. But Doug seems to use this in a multitude of places. And I do, again, use the little Ziploc bags because it is sticky on the outside. So you don't want to just throw it in your bag. I've seen people use it actually to kind of tape a little bit of the curtain shut. So when the light's coming in their cruise room, I kind of think of more emergency situations. That's what I kind I've of think of. I've you up while we needed to get you to the first aid kit. That is true. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. Cleat through my foot from a boat. It's like used some, I think we actually had some packing, like gauze some and gauze stuff. and stuff, and then used this because that was the best to keep it on and it kind of, you know, keeps it from, you know, dripping blood everywhere. But anyways, emergency situations, you never know what's going to go on a cruise ship where you might use it. So have it with you. It doesn't take up much extra room. <laughs> Zip ties. I see these around our house. I see them in the garage. I see them everywhere. Doug uses them for everything. We use them for the cameras, for tying them to things, to keep them in place, use them for keeping bags shut. One time our bags broke, he you know, connected the two um, ends that, that connect with the zippers because the actual zippers you know, tore off in um, transport on the airplane. So he was either able to put those together and keep the bags shut. Ugh, multitude of play things have some binoculars because there tend to be some things swimming in the ocean. We've seen dolphins, we've seen whales go by. Um, so it's nice to have. These they sell on the cruise ship for $70. You probably can get them on Amazon for less. How many times have you been somewhere? I can't tell you how many times. You have your glasses and then all of a sudden the little thing falls out, the little screw. And these are not something you're going to find on board. You're not going to find a little screwdriver or an extra um, screw. So if you wear glasses, bring this little kit with you. And of course, Doug loves to have a flashlight because, well, why wouldn't you have a flashlight? Say the lights go on in the boat. I've heard enough situations and I see it on the news of things happening on cruise ships. And I would like to be one of those people that has a flashlight. So. Doug says throw it in the bag and we have it in the bag and because they're small I just throw it in you know the regular little toiletry bag that I have crazy glue because I've used it at home for things and I'm sure things would happen that I could use it for I've not used it to this point but throw one in super hack next to last straws let me show you. So on the cruise ship, they have converted from plastic straws to paper straws, which is fine. I, I completely accept that, however, I just don't like it. <laughs> and drinking a milkshake with a paper straw and or any kind of like thing that's wet, really with paper, doesn't work. So when you get off the cruise ship, come to Dunkin' Donuts, get a drink or something, and then grab a couple of plastic straws. And then you can take them back on the cruise ship and have plastic straws with your drinks that are wet and they won't get soggy. Our last and final amazing super hack. Yep, that's it. It's a magnet and it holds 25 pounds. As you know, cruise ships are made of metal. So, these magnets will hold anything. How cool is that? 